Joe Rogan just released a podcast with Sam Altman, so I went through the entire thing and selected the most interesting parts related to AI. Enjoy. What we need is an AI government and have AI just run make things. all the decisions. Yeah, have something that's completely unbiased, absolutely rational, has the accumulated knowledge of the entire human history. Saw so say something there. Um, I think we're still very far away from a system that is capable enough and reliable enough that any of us would want that. But I'll tell you something I love about that. The fact that it can go around and talk to every person on earth, understand their exact preferences at a very deep level, and then understand all of that and, and like optimize for the collective preferences of humanity or of citizens of the US, that's awesome. Now, if AI keeps improving, will it eventually turn into a god? What happens once we have AGI? When you think of AGI, do you ever extrapolate? Do you ever, do you ever like sit and pause and say, well, if this, thing, if this becomes sentient, how long before we're literally dealing with a god? The right way to think about it is this continu continuum of intelligence, this smooth exponential curve. The amount of compute power we can put into the system, the scientific ideas about how to make it more efficient and smarter, that will all come. now. Even if that happens in a decade or three decades, it's still like the blink of an eye from a historical perspective. One of the most exciting topics is the next version of ChatGPT. When is it coming out and how good will it be? ChatGPT is on what, 4.5 now? Four. Four. And with 4.5, there'll be some sort of an exponential increase in its abilities. It'll be somewhat better. I don't expect the, few, the jump from like four to whenever we finish 4.5, which will be a little while. I don't expect that to be the crazy, I think the crazy switch, the crazy adjustment that people have had to go through has, has mostly happened. I think most people have gone from thinking that AGI was science fiction and very far off to something that is going to happen. But what about things like Neuralink? Is that inevitable? And if someone has it, will that person become superhuman? Do you think about the convergence of uh, things like uh, Neuralink and uh, there's a, a few competing technologies where they're trying to implement some sort of some sort of a connection between the human biological system and technology? Do you want one of those things in your head? I don't until everybody does. Right. You have to kind of yeah. because everybody's going to have it. Like as a society, are we going to let some people merge with AGI right. and not others. If we do, and you choose not to, like, what does that mean for you? The thing that I find myself most interested in is what we can do without drilling a hole in someone's head. It's amazing how many interesting topics they've discussed in this podcast. And the best part is that we're only getting started. So if you want to see more breakdowns of Sam Altman interviews, please subscribe. When did OpenAI, when did you first start this project? Uh, our, like the very beginning, end, end of 2015, early 2016. And what kind of timeline did you have in mind and has it stayed on that timeline or is it just wildly out of control? I remember talking with John Schulman, one of our co-founders early on, and he was like, yeah, I think it's gonna be about a 15 year project. And I was like, yeah, it sounds about right to me. I, you know, that would take us to like 2030, 2031. And I kind of think we're on the trajectory I sort of would have assumed. But Sam Altman isn't the only person who thinks that we will have AGI before 2030. Elon Musk and Greg Brockman both think the same. The thinker who I think had the best foresight about how the AI revolution was going to play out is actually Ray Kurzweil. You know, he... I agree. Yeah. And part of what he says is, look, what's going to happen is in 2030s. First of all, he says AGI 2029. Yeah, I keep telling people. It seems to be almost exactly right. It's, it's spooky. It's spooky. It's easy to imagine how AI might change the world for the better. But what about all the negatives? What are the possible dangers? We definitely talked a lot about the cons. You know, many of us were super worried about safety and alignment. And if we build these systems, if something goes horribly wrong, it's like really horribly wrong. And so there was a lot of discussion about how are we going to solve the safety problem? One of the things that we believe is that you've got to like have contact with reality, you've got to see where the technology goes. Practice plays out in a stranger way than theory. And that's certainly proven true for us. But we had a long list of intense list of cons because, you know, there's like all of the last decades of sci-fi telling you about how this goes wrong. Why yeah. are you supposed to shoot me right now? Yeah. <laughs> Sam says, you're supposed to shoot me right now. And Joe replies, yeah. The thing that I was most excited about then and remain most excited about now is what if this system can dramatically increase the rate of scientific knowledge in society? I think that kind of like all real sustainable economic growth 
comes from increased scientific and technological capacity. And if the AI can help us do that, that's always been the thing I've been most excited about. Turns out Joe Rogan really likes the idea of an AI president. I mean, that's why I was talking about an AI president. Kind of not joking, because I feel like if something yeah. was hyper-intelligent and aware of all the variables with no human bias and no incentives, the elimination of these dictators, elected or non-elected, who impose their will. The thing that I find scary when you say that is it does, it feels like it's humanity not in control. If it's instead like it is the collective will of humanity being expressed without the mistranslation and corrupting influences along the way, yes. then I can see it. Next up, Sam talks about what it's like to be the CEO of OpenAI. I cannot imagine a cooler thing to work on. I feel unbelievably, right. I feel like the luckiest person on earth. That's but awesome. It's not on easy mode, let's say that. Oh, yeah. This is not life on easy mode. No, 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 no. I mean, you are at the forefront of one of the most spectacular changes in human history. I would say more spectacular than the implementation of the internet. Artificial general intelligence, it is the internet on steroids. What I would say is it's, it's the next step and there'll be more steps after, yes. but it's our most exciting step yet. Yeah. Now what Joe said next really surprised me. I think we're the last people. I really do. I think we're the last of the biological people with all the biological problems. A and very, do you feel excited I, about that? I just think that's just what it is. You're just fine with it. It is what it is. I don't think you can control it at this point, other than some massive natural disaster that resets us back to the Stone Age. One of the most fascinating topics is whether we live in a simulation. If AI can create hyper-realistic games, how do we know that we're not in one of those games? We talked about the simulation hypothesis earlier. It's had this big resurgence in, in the tech industry recently. One of the things, one, one of the new takes on it as we get closer to AGI is that, you know, if ancestors were simulating us, the time they'd want to simulate again and again is right up to the the lead up to the creation of AGI. Yeah. So it seems very crazy we're living through this time. But it's mm -hmm. not a coincidence at all. And it's also this interesting time to simulate. Like, can we get through? Does the asteroid come right before we get there for dramatic tension? Like, do we figure out how to make this safe? Do we figure out how to societally agree on it? So that's led to like a lot more people believing in it than before, I think. Mm. A lot of people wish they could live in the past, in the age without phones and the internet but Joe and Sam have a different take. I would not want to live in the 1800s and be in a covered wagon trying to make my way across the country. Yeah, we got the most exciting time in history yet. It's the best, it's the best, but it also has the most problems, the most social problems, the, the most infrastructure, the, 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 the issues we get that to we go, have. We get to go solve them. Yeah. Remember when Joe said that we are the last humans? Well, Sam doesn't think so. I don't think we're the last humans. How long do you think we have? like longer than a time frame I can reason about. I could totally imagine a world where some people decide to merge and go off exploring the universe with AI and there's a big universe out there, but like, can I really imagine a world where short of a natural disaster, there are not humans pretty similar to humans from today? It's very hard for me to actually see that happening. Yeah, I don't feel that at all. I feel like we're done. Seems like Joe Rogan turned into a doomer. Okay, so when it comes to brain-machine interfaces like Neuralink, what will be the first wave of people that use it? And that's what Elon's talked about as well, when the first implementations, the, the restoration of sight. That's tremendously exciting. Yeah. Uh, and, and like many other technologies, I don't think we can stop neural interfaces because of the like great good that's gonna happen along the way. But I right. also don't think we know where it goes. It's Pandora's box for sure. So what does Joe Rogan think of ChatGPT? Does he like it? Does he find it useful? Or is he one of the skeptics? ChatGPT is so amazing. You could ask it to code a website for you and it does it instantly and it solves problems and it gets to it right away. This is the dumbest it will ever be. Yeah, that's what's crazy. Now, I definitely didn't expect Sam Altman to bring up this topic. Once we have AGI, who will get access? This is a question that Joe should have asked, so I'm quite impressed that Sam not only didn't avoid it, but actually brought up the topic himself. Some people have access to GPT-7 and can spend a lot on the inference compute for it, and some don't. I think that's going to be very transformative too. Even without a neural interface, you're kind of a lot of the way to mm -hmm. the scenario you're describing. Sure, with, with stocks. Well, or with like, you know, tell me how to like invent some new technology that will change the course of history. Mm. Like I think what somehow matters is access to massive amounts of computing power, especially like differentially massive amounts, maybe more than the interface itself. Joe Rogan is the king of podcasts, but recently Lex Friedman did something that shocked the world. He recorded the world's first podcast inside of the metaverse. Did you see the podcast that um, Lex Friedman did with uh, Mark Zuckerberg? I saw some clips, but I haven't got to watch the whole Bizarre. thing. Bizarre. 
right? So they're, they're, they're essentially using like very realistic physical yeah. avatars. Like that's that's step one. That's Pong. maybe that's step three. Yeah. Maybe it's a little yeah. beyond Pong at that point. Yeah, maybe it's Atari. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you're playing Space Invaders now. But whatever it is, it's on the path to this thing that will be indistinguishable. That seems inevitable. So maybe we'll see Joe Rogan episodes in the metaverse soon. Who knows? Either way, it really seems like Joe can't stop thinking about the idea of AI becoming God. We will create a life form, intelligent life form that's far more advanced than us. And once it becomes sentient, it will be able to create a far better version of itself. And if it keeps going, it will reach godlike capabilities. If we keep going, if we survive a hundred years, a thousand years, 10,000 years, and we're still on this same technological exponential increasing in capability path, that's God. All of that is in the future. But what if we take the current technology and go into the past? Imagine if you go to ChatGPT and go back to uh, Socrates and show him that, explain to that, and show him a phone and, you know, and put it on the phone and have access to it. He'd be like, what have you done? Like, what is this? Like, Man, if you just like woke up after 2000 years and there was like a phone, that would, yeah. you have no model for that. You didn't get to get there gradually. Yeah, no, you didn't get. <laughs> a few months ago, there was a viral AI letter asking for a six month pause. It was signed by people like Elon Musk, Max Tegmark, Emad Mostak, and a bunch of others. What do you think about like when Elon was causing, calling for a pause on AI? And he was like starting an AGI company while he was doing that. Yeah. So, didn't he start it like after he was calling for the pause? Calling for a pause is like naive at, at best. Safety and capabilities are not these two separate things. This is like, I think, one of the dirty secrets of the field. All of that said, as like a human. And I was human. I am human, still. Um... Uh, emotionally speaking, I super understand why it's tempting to call for a pause. It happens all the time in life, right? This is moving too fast. Right. I, we gotta take right. a pause here. But some people actually think that pausing AI would be a terrible idea. AI pioneers like Jan LeCun and Andrew Eng were both strongly against the six months pause. And the reason is simple. China and Russia would use that pause to get ahead. How much of a concern is it in terms of national security that we are the ones that come up with this first? I would say that if an adversary of ours comes up with it first and uses it against us and we don't have some level of capability, that feels really bad. Yeah. But I hope that what happens is we kind of come together and overcome our base impulses and say like, let's all do this as a club together. Mm. That would be better. If you enjoyed this breakdown, then please subscribe. It helps out a lot. And of course, make sure to check out the full episode on Spotify. The link is in the description.